it's Doreen with Ooh La La Vintage Treasures. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. And thank you guys all so much for stopping by who watch my videos on a regular. I really appreciate it. And thank you all for leaving all your comments. I will answer all the comments as I uh, finish up some of these videos. I will go back and answer your comments. I do appreciate all your sweet comments you guys leave me. And I will do my best to always comment back. We are going to make some drawer pulls for a desk and I will post the picture that you see here. You, If you watched the video before this, I showed you a preview of the desk that I was working on. I had kind of styled the desk and, you know, told you in the video what I was doing with the desk and what was going in the desk. So you go back one video before this one and it'll be a little reveal to my craft room. And in that video that I shared, I showed the drawer pull. But we're going to make one today, and it's really, really simple, you guys. I tried to find a drawer pull to fit my drawer. It is about, let's see if I can show you. So it has these two holes. It's one and a half inches across from each other. And I was having a very hard time trying to find something that would work. They're pretty long drawers. Let's see if I could show you the size. So it goes this way and this way. I believe it's 18 inches long and it's about 13 inches wide. Okay. And I have 20 of those drawers and three of the drawers at the top are pull out drawers that are display drawers. So like I said, if you want to see it, you can go to the video before this one and you'll see what I'm talking about. But we are making drawer pulls today to work on anything that you want to make them work on. You can use them for cardboard boxes or anything you want to do. And I may try to show you, I'm looking for my cardboard box. I may try to show you one of those on a cardboard box too, just for fun. Let's see if I have an empty one up here we could play with. So we could try it on this box too and see how it comes out. Now in a longer video, a while ago, I had posted that I was going to make my my cabinet. It's a shoe cabinet, and it has 15 spaces to put boxes in. Well, I was going to use these cardboard boxes that I got from Michael's when I bought some containers. And I was all ready to use these, and then I changed my mind at the last minute. That's why I didn't show the video, because that's what I do. I change my mind all the time. So... I'm always changing up things. My ideas are, you know, most of the time I have an idea and then I come up with a better idea. So the better idea is that I'm using cigar boxes in my cabinet. So I'm using these white cigar boxes and then the items will go inside the cigar box. Okay. And these are so pretty to look at. And then I just have my things dangling there because I hadn't used them yet. So they're just on display sitting in the box because I haven't filled these up. This is going to hold paper bits and different things like, you know, things like this kind of stuff. Book pages and smaller items that would fit in this box. So the box looks like this. 20 cigars it holds. So it'll hold quite a lot of paper. I was looking to see if I could see the dimensions for you guys. It says 5 by 50, but that's not right either. I'm not sure what the size is. Let's see if I have my ruler close by. I bet you I buried my ruler over here. My computer sits right here. And so that's why you always see this kind of covered up. Let's see what this box looks like here, what size it is. About, take that off. Yeah, see, it's eight inches across, about eight and a half by five and a half. So eight and a half by five and a half. Good size that fits perfect in my shoe cabinet. And I moved my shoe cabinet over by my desk. So I'll show you guys that in another video. As I get these things together, you'll see more things. I'm trying to get better with showing you guys what I'm doing over here so you can get inspired as well. Um, but anyway, that was my little dangle topper that I had on the cigar box. So let's go back to what I was showing you. We're going to make a little drawer pull that's going to go on the drawer I showed you. One and a half inches across from each other. Okay, so if you have wire, any kind of wire will work. 
I am using 22 gauge, so you'll need some 22 gauge wire or stronger. This happens to be from the Christmas line. A couple years ago I bought this. I like that it's white and you don't have to, you know, paint things if it's going to go on furniture or whatever. So I love using this wire, but I've already cut my wires and I need to cut one more. Then you're going to need, for this project, you're going to need some buttons, any kind of button. You're going to need some pearls. So I've got pearls and rondelles like this, right? And I want to say, I think that's it for both sides. So you really just need a few pearls, different sizes, and some rondelles if you want to make this exact thing. But honestly, you could take any beads and make it work. You could take wood beads if you like wood and do the wood bead. Let me see if I can grab a few beads to show you. Let me just see when you stick this in here how it goes. Yeah, see, it goes pretty good in there. And there's some space there as well. So I added some more of these beads here and I almost think I might need to have three beads. So I thought I would do three beads or four beads. So let's just play around with it and see what happens. Okay. So I have it in this cute little vintage heart dish here. Thought it would be appropriate for Valentine's Day. You need something that you can push through the hole. Okay. And I'm going to show you what I use because you probably are wondering what I'm using here. And this is a bustier off of a wedding dress, the top of the wedding dress. And I discovered by cutting this that I could use this right here as my guide for what I needed. So this is what that looks like and it has that plastic inside. And I'm going to try to make something with the plastic as well. So I'm just going to cut. It cuts pretty good, that plastic. It's a little tough on your scissors, but you just take your time and do it. This is just the materials that... So this is the material that we're using right now that we're going to use to make our drawer pulls. And I have several pieces I can cut off of this. So it goes like that, and then I'm just going to cut it short. I don't want it too much hanging off because I just want to use the inner part of this as my guide. Okay, so we're going to take that off. And for now, I'm going to put this away on the side. And then we're going to come back with this piece. And then, of course, you can use those other pieces for other things. So here it is. This is going to be your strip that I'm going to use and I can make several pieces for my drawer pull that I'm making. All right. So what you're going to do is you're first going to make sure the edge comes out. So it's like this and you can pull it out like this, right? Now, isn't that pretty? I was looking at that too before I started this whole thing and I was admiring the ruffle, of course, me and my ruffles, right? And so you just kind of pull it through and I'm going to save these plastics because I have an idea with these and I don't want to throw everything in the garbage. I like to use things from wedding dresses because wedding dresses have so many things on them. You don't even realize you can use. I had to rip it a little bit to get it through. Okay. So then you have something like this and then you have this piece right here. Most people throw that away, but I have an idea for this later. I'm going to come up with something for this plastic that goes inside. And then I take this part off and I just take it off like this. I just rip it off because most likely that'll get tea dyed or put into something else and used as a trim for something. I have a little basket over there that I'm putting all the fabrics in. So you have something like this and then I just kind of get all the rough edges off like that. But I do kind of like that frayed look and I do use that. And then this is my sample of what I use to cut. So I'm going to need five of these. So I'm just going to cut these like that. I may have to do another one. But I'm just showing you the process. And then you'll be surprised how you look at wedding dresses. Uh, you know, the innards of a wedding dress sometimes. 
for that piece I can get three pieces okay so I only need one more piece I'm going to cut this and I'll be right back after I cut it and show you to build our drawer pulls simple simple I'll probably only do a few with you and then I'll go off camera and finish the rest and making sure that I have the ones with the stitching that look like this on both sides so that you can run the wire through well that one's gonna go through pretty good there do the stripe bead first and then we'll do the rondelle and then we'll go with the pearl and I think that's going to be enough to make the pull look just perfect in the drawers. That's adorable, isn't it? I like how it's doing that. Okay. And so let's do other side. Now it's a little fiddly at first and you may, like I said, you may have to glue this edge right here, which I probably don't need to do that because it's going to be up against the button so it'll be fine so it'll sit like that and then we'll try it on the drawer just to see how we like it too okay and fabric again making sure that has the little hole I'm thinking I might want to have a pearl on the end here Let's see this one's giving me a little bit of a fit so, you know, you just have to play with it. Do I want to put that pearl there? I think I do. I want to put the pearl. To give it the ivory color or cream color. Does it fit? Okay, good. I thought I measured all these. The pearls. I didn't measure the white milk glass beads and they don't fit. So, that's okay. We'll just work with what we got. All right, looks like a hot mess right at the moment. We're going to put it on the drawer and see how it looks, okay? Let's just try it out. I'm going to grab the drawer, and I'm going to prop it in the camera part. See if you can see it. Yeah. Okay, and then we're going to run it through the hole and stick it through the the um the drawer and then you have that and then what I do is I twist it a couple times with my pliers I'll take the pliers and twist it get it in there tight you know and then twist it like this 
and then you have a nice, nice, um, tight drawer pull. And that's basically how you make it, you guys. Right? That's how you do it. And that is so cute! Isn't that adorable? Oh my goodness! Go grab your wedding dresses, you guys, because you know once you start finding this type of stuff, you'll make all kinds of fun stuff with this. Now, when I started threading it on the wire, I already thought of other ideas. And I'm going to give you an idea after this, what I'm thinking. If you don't want to make the drawer pull, that you can make something else. And there is the other side. We'll have a piece of fabric. You see how easy that is? Once it goes in the hole, right there, then you add your little beads. I'm going to be working on some more jewelry things too. I'm really excited to share those. I have some dangle ideas that are really, really fun and simple to make. In your crafting, in your junk journals, you can use the dangles on letters, on stacked letters, in your craft room hanging down. There's lots of possibilities for that. So there you go. That's another one done. Now let's try... I'm curious to see if it'll work in here on this cardboard box now that I have it here. I'm looking for my pokey tool. Let me see where I put it. Okay. This is what we're going to try, but I don't know if it's going to give you a big enough hole. We want, we want like a one and a half. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it. See if this works. Pretty sure it will. That's pretty good, right? So just play with your beads because you probably have a lot of beads and you might even have cardboard boxes that you want to stack in your room, like me. Yeah, so there's your loop there. It's one finger loop. Okay, so that's what you have there. So that's what it looks like. And then you can decorate your You'll decorate your outside with papers and pretty stuff, right? We were just trying that out to see how that was going to look on the box. Okay, let's take this back off for now. And if you wanted to, put the beads back on, or the pearls, I mean, which I do. I love my pearls. They have to go on everything. Okay. All right. So, okay, so you see how this is now? All right, so if you pull it up, if you pull it up like this, and you bring it, you bring it around your bead, and you kind of make a loop. Let's see if this works. I'm just playing, but I was like experimenting and thinking this whole I, this whole thing here could be a cute little button dangle and use it for a dangle idea. Once you get that and you bring the wire around like this, don't pinch yourself and then you just keep, keep carrying the wire around. And you don't really need this, those things to do it. You get something like this that you'll have a loop at the end, which will tie off the bead, right? And you'll have the beads at one end or another. And then you just tie your wire off like that. And then it becomes a bead dangle. If you wanted to gift maybe somebody some beads and maybe, you know, a special button, then you could just do that. And if you put the loop at the top and make it go around to hold a bulb pin, 
All right, so you take your wires, right, and you just kind of push them, push them down like that, and that makes the loop. It's also good if you have pretty wire, like if you have a gold or a silver or rose gold, that looks pretty too. But anyway, if you do this and you make that loop at the top and maybe tie a bow or something, then you could make this into a dangle, like right there. You could also add crystals to the end. What else? What else could you do? You could take a piece of lace like this and if you wanted to give gift some lace or pre present some lace but you didn't want everything permanent, you could run the lace through the wire through the lace like that and then you hide the wires in the back like this like that and then you just snip off your dangle part once you hang it I mean you could snip it off like that and you have like a little piece of applique hanging down let's see let's visualize this you guys I'm a visual person and so you just cut a piece of lace like that and then you have like a cute little dangle. I mean, I would add crystals to the bottom, like, you know, those big fat crystals, chandelier pieces or something like that. That would be so cute. You have a cute little dangle. Isn't that so sweet? So yeah, get out your buttons and, and your wire and just start playing. It's just really, really fun to do. And... That would be the dangle if you were using it. You could also add it like a belly band around a project too. If you wanted to use the same stuff, right? You unwrap this. And of course you're not gonna mangle your wire like I did. If you wanted to do something, you know, where you wrap it like a belly band around something. Let me see if I have anything over here like a belly band. Or you could even hang it around this say for instance you have this right make your wire a little bit longer and make a belly band like that and then it's a cute presentation that is that idea and let's see so we have the part where it dangles down and you add a charm this is just beads and pearls you know random stuff on a chain nothing fancy and I'm gonna get to making these and then I'll come back and show you them all done all right so I cleared off my desk so that I could show you guys something the drawer pulls I was making for the drawers and I was getting ready to put them on the drawers and I realized that these are button bouquets you guys is that not the cutest you literally just make a little wreath type button bouquet right and there's six of them here so all you're gonna do is like twist your wires and I've done some already because I was just amazed at this idea I want to use circles and book pages like behind it for the bouquet but for my drawer pulls I'm not gonna do that because you won't see them you're just gonna see the beads up against it you know but I just wanted to show you real quick how cute this came out. Okay, so we're just doing this and crunching them together and putting them in the vase like that. How cute is that? Oh my goodness. I'm in love. I'm going to have to make some more. This was so much fun. I hope it inspired you to think outside the box of making drawer pulls yourself because... I honestly didn't know it was going to turn out this cute on my drawers. And I think what I'm going to end up doing is not making these all the same and maybe alternating with different buttons. And hopefully you enjoyed this little video. And I will be back with another video very soon. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye.